Hi, I'm Dan from the Android DevRel team, and I'm here to talk about integrity. Integrity, the quality of being honest, the state of being whole and coherent. You've spent time and effort making games, countless hours tweaking in-game economies, tuning play mechanics, making sure that the game has a great hook, figuring out monetization models, ensuring that it retains players, and in between all of that, you even made it entertaining. Your hard work and dedication has made Android a great place to play in so many ways, and the majority of users have good interactions and enjoy playing your games the way you've intended. However, there are always actors who are less well-intentioned. So you have to deal with abuse, such as cheating, tampering, fraud, theft, piracy, and unauthorized access. Many types of abuse can originate from untrustworthy interactions with your app, coming from unknown accounts or devices with unknown integrity. In the past, separate APIs helped with specific problems. The Safety Net Attestation API and Google Play Licensing help thousands of games trust devices, their installed app binaries, and user access privileges every day. But the challenge continues to evolve. There are increasingly sophisticated forms of abuse that put your users and your business at risk. You've also told us that you're concerned about the complexity of integrating with multiple APIs and the fear of letting serious abuse through without even knowing. So, we've unified our most advanced technologies so that you can protect the integrity of your games by calling a single API, helping you to detect risky and untrustworthy game interactions. This new API gives your app server signals to help it decide whether or not to trust an interaction with your app. The API helps you answer three questions. Is this a genuine binary? Is this a genuine play install? Is this a genuine Android device? Based on the answers to these, you can decide how to mitigate any potential risks. The new API has some key benefits. It's fully supported by Google Play with up-to-date documentation, samples, and best practices. You can set up the API and customize its responses from the Play console. The integrity response token is small and encrypted. It packages multiple integrity signals in one response, so you don't need to implement multiple APIs. The API is also future-looking. It can support new device types, form factors, and future integrity signals. So, how does it work? The API allows your app server to communicate through your app to Google Play servers to determine trust in a way that can't be interfered with. Let's look at the main steps together. First, the user tries to do something, like join a multiplayer game. At this moment, your backend server starts an integrity check with a unique ID. Then, your game makes a call to the Play Integrity API. Google Play has a lot of different signals to assess whether the device has been compromised and whether it has passed the certification tests. Play also verifies the license, which means that the user has downloaded the game from Play. This ensures that purchase games were purchased, but also that the game is available in the user's region. As a result, the Play Integrity API sends back a signed and encrypted verdict about whether you can trust the device, the binary, and whether the user should have access to the game. Your game forwards it back to your server, where you can analyze the verdict and check that it comes back with the same ID you sent it with. If everything is fine, you can let your user move on. All this happens with little CPU and network usage, minimizing user disruption. So that is how the Play Integrity API works. So, how do you get started with the Play Integrity API? To fully take advantage of this API, you really should have a game server, and that server should be responsible for a critical portion of game logic. This enables you to make game decisions on a tamper-free service based at least partially upon the signals you get from the Play Integrity API. Like with many of Google Play's APIs, before you start implementing any of this, you need to link a Google Cloud project. We've added an easy way to do this within the Google Play console. You can also configure which integrity signals your game will receive within the Google Play console. Then you can start integrating the Play Integrity API into your game client. We provide the API in multiple forms to best suit your environment, including Kotlin and Java, C, and a plugin for the Unity engine. The basic API flow, shown here in highly abridged form with a C API, 
involves creating the request, setting a nonce that will typically come from your server, requesting the integrity token, receiving the signed token back, and passing that signed token off to your server to be verified. The nonce value used once is typically a random number used to prevent replay attacks, but it can also be used to prevent high value actions from tampering. When being used to prevent replay attacks, the server generates a nonce and sends it to the game client. The game calls play integrity with the nonce, and Google Play will create a signed response that includes the nonce the game will return to the server for verification. One can also protect a high value action from tampering by calculating the hash of a high value message, using that as the nonce and having play return the signed response with the hash so that the server can verify the action. You can combine these two techniques to get both benefits. The server generates and sends a nonce to the game client. The game appends the hash associated with the high value action to the nonce and then sends this combined nonce to Google Play through the Play Integrity API. The signed verdict is returned to the game, which sends the signed result to the game server. The signature is verified by the game server, and the original nonce is separated from the combined nonce and verified. The hashed part of the nonce is then used to verify or perform the action, and then the server responds with client instructions. We provide the ability to do end-to-end -end testing with the Google Play Console. You can make sure that testers within a specific email list get a specific return value from the API, allowing you to make sure you've tested all of the response pathways within your client and server from end-to-end. -end. If you've used SafetyNet Attestation API, the implementation is very similar. One big difference is in the encoding of the nonce. SafetyNet Attestation allows you to use a byte array, while the Play Integrity API requires a Base64 encoded WebSafe no wrap string for the nonce. On your server, you'll want to add code to support both the SafetyNet Attestation API as well as the Play Integrity API, the new nonce encoding, and handlers for any additional integrity signals. Within your game client, there's a direct mapping from the way SafetyNet attestation works to the way the Play Integrity API works. In addition, you'll want to implement the retry logic recommended by Play Integrity. Reducing the number of APIs you need to call to protect your game is a big part of what motivated the Play Integrity API. We return app licensing information as part of the integrity verdict. This allows you to verify that the user has acquired the game from Google Play, which is important for games that are doing a limited regional release or a closed beta. It also allows you to verify that your game has been purchased if you have a paid game. The existing license verification library is still the recommended choice for games that don't have an online component. Now, some important things to remember when using the API. Identify your main concerns. Do you have a piracy problem, game misuse, fraudulent traffic, cheating, or something else? Measure how big the problem is and consider what it's costing you so that you know how much effort to put into reducing it. When it comes to integrity issues, there's no silver bullet, and the Play Integrity API is not intended to be one. You should use the Play Integrity API as part of an overall security and anti-abuse strategy. Make sure you're taking into account the risk of false positives and any costs that you might be introducing to good users. Consider creative alternatives rather than just blocking risky traffic. Finally, you should keep measuring and evolving. Listen to your users and stay up to date with our Android and Play features, as well as industry anti-abuse best practices. In conclusion, you spent time and energy designing an entire ecosystem for your players. The Play Integrity API provides signals you can use to ensure that your honest players are enjoying the coherent experience you've created for them. The Play Integrity API is available now. Find out more at g.co slash play slash integrity API.